taken from your, your assignments, but what is this? Question four. And <clears throat> this is what you're getting. And again, I'm going to just push through past what they give you. I really like mine green. Let me just go just to change it. All right. Cool. So I'm going to read it. You guys are going to help me pull the notation out from the problem. And then we're going to figure out if we're doing T or Z. And then we're going to do the same stuff we did. You're going to watch. I'm going to copy and paste a lot of this. All right. Hmm. In a survey, 32 people were asked how much they spent on their child's last birthday gift. Stop. What does that 32 represent for me? Sample. Mm -hmm. That's my N, my sample size, 32. I think I like mine green better. Hold on, I might be bouncing through colors with this one. All right. <laughs> the results were roughly bell shaped with a mean, roughly bell shaped, and normally distributed, with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 2. Talk to me about those. Does that mean and standard deviation, do they both come from the sample? Or not? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Listen, we have 50 50 shots. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I don't know who said what. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So let's see. <laughs> okay. So in the survey, 32, let's analyze. 32 people were asked how much they spent on their child's last birthday gift. The results. The results from the survey were roughly bell shaped. The results from the survey, so their mean from the sample was 40, and the standard deviation from the sample was two. So on average, they spent $40 for that sample on their child's last birthday gift. I feel like I spent <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's one gift. My kids are spoiled. All right. Find the margin of error at 95% confidence level. So tell me something. We're talking about means, right? So I'm not dealing with proportions. Proportions are like percentages or fractions of, you're not hearing that. That's a whole nother thing. Means. So all right, cool. So I'm doing means for my confidence intervals, right? So I have to figure out is sigma known or is sigma unknown? So what do you think? Do I know the population standard deviation or not? Unknown. Unknown. Because that's. Go ahead. No population. Or, I mean, it said and. That's all I remember. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Because it doesn't give you the population. It doesn't one. give you. No, it says. From this survey, the mean and the standard deviation were this and this. It doesn't say, it doesn't say this. In a survey, 32 people were asked how much they spent on their child's last birthday gift. The results were roughly bell shaped with a mean of $40. The population standard deviation is two. There's a separation, right? There's a separation from the average versus the standard deviation. The average in that case came from the sample. And then I said population standard deviation. Or if, or if you said, or if you're told like all, the standard deviation for all, then that would imply sigma or a population standard deviation. So, you know, if you have these word problems, you want to determine whether the information comes from the sample or comes from a population. And we're, we're re these results are from a survey, so it comes from that sample. You with me? Yes. <laughs> All right, I need to find a margin of error. Okay, let's think about how to find a margin of error. Now, there's two ways to do that. You could either go straight to the formula, or you can use my other trick and go through the confidence interval to get to the margin of error. Which way do you guys want to use? <laughs> Your way. <laughs> The calculator trick. <laughs> um, all right, so let's determine how we're going to find the interval. Even though we're not asked for it, we're going to find it. I'll probably find more anyway. And we'll do it in interval notation first. Um, I 
kind of already gave it away. We're going to use T interval because sigma is unknown. Right? Again, I'm referring back to here. Confidence interval for mean. Sigma is unknown. I'm using T interval. And check it out. If I want to find a critical value, it would be a T score. We'll find that later. So let's do it. Second bars. Is that where I go? No, because I don't see it there. That's if I want the critical value. Stat, test, and scroll past this stuff. Go down to T interval because I want an interval. Data or stat? Stat. Stats. I have statistical values. I don't have a, you know, a list of numbers. So let's input 40 for my first. S, notice it's saying SX because I use um, T when I know the sample standard deviation, which in this case is 2. My N is 32. My C level, 95%. We finally have a change in that. You'll see a lot of 95% confidence intervals, 90%, 99%. Those are the three most common, but you can find whatever interval you want, really. So here we go. My low end is 39.279 and then 40.721. And I hope you guys <clears throat> got that. And I'm using that to find my margin of error because my question asks for my margin of error, not necessarily for my interval, even though I found it. How do I find my margin of error from my interval? And if I need to, this is like. I guess I could write that here too. Um, margin of error for everything. Margin of error is max minus min over two. This is from a confidence interval. <clears throat> so max is 40.721. Minus min 39.279 over 2. I don't know what the heck that is. Did you guys do that yet? 39.279 min divided by 2. 0 0.721. Make sure if you're plugging it in like I did, <clears throat> right? Make sure you put parentheses around your subtraction because if you don't, your calculator is going to do order of operations. Check it out. And I've had this again every semester. Somebody is asking me what's going on. You got something completely different. And the reason is because your calculator does order of operations. So it would naturally do division and then subtraction, which would give you the wrong thing because you wanted to do subtraction and then division. So if you're going to plug it all in parentheses around the subtraction, 0.721. Now, round your answer to two decimal places, so 0.72. So that's my margin of error. Um, so I'm going to add to this now, right? This is all extra stuff. My confidence interval in this notation would be 39.279. And then that's kind of an easy transition. What about this notation? When I represent it in terms of the point estimate, and the margin of error. How would that look? What goes here? I have 40. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, 40. And then your margin of error would be plus or minus 0.72, if I'm rounding, right, to two decimals. OK, cool. All right, <clears throat> extra, extra stuff. Let's do the interpretation. Check me out. I'm going to cheat and just copy and paste this, right? And just manipulate it. Because the interpretation does not vary much except for, you know, obviously what we're talking about. I'm not talking about chocolate chips here, so I have to change that. We are 95% confident that the true mean um, let me change this. The true mean what? I don't know. The true what? The true mean amount spent on their um, 
a child's last birthday gift for the population is between I'm gonna round to two decimals because it's money now. Thirty nine point two eight dollars. And forty point seven two dollars. Am I tripping? Is like I must be spoiling my children. Because I'm definitely stupid. <laughs> On one gift, possibly. Obviously. Oh, uh, if many groups of randomly selected um, people, I guess, were studying, I guess I would say parents were studying, then a different confidence interval would be produced about blank percent of these will contain the true population, we'll say the true um, spent on their child last. And about blank percent will not contain the true mean amount. Okay. You see, I didn't change much. And then, um, if many groups of what? Groups of what goes here? If many groups of what randomly selected? What goes in my first blank if I were to 32, because it's my sample size. If I continue to select 32 um, parents, and I would have different confidence intervals produced. 95 and 5? Yep, 95 and 5, because that's my confidence level. Yep. Now, um, let me add to that. Tell me if you guys have questions while I set up the next part, because what's left for me to practice here? We got the confidence interval. We got it all three ways. We got the margin of error. We got two interpretations. What's left? What I, I mean, if I want to practice stuff here, what, what's the left? Alpha? The what? The alpha. The alpha. The alpha. The, the critical value. That stuff. So all right. So tell me something. I have a um. Oops. I have a ninety-five percent confidence level. Right. I'll call it CL confidence level. CL confidence level. Tell me about alpha. What's alpha? How much is alpha here? 31. Well, you sample. Well, your sample size was 32. Alpha here is the complement of the confidence level. So one minus. I was thinking of the other thing, the DF thing. Yeah, the degrees of freedom. You're ahead of me. You're ahead of me. OK. <laughs> You're correct, but you're ahead of me. <laughs> Alpha over two, I'm gonna take that and divide it by two, 0 0.025. And then am I on a T distribution curve or a Z if I wanna draw my pretty curve? T. T, because we're dealing with T scores, right? We already talked about that up here. Um, and then 95% is here. So that makes the 5% separated into two tails. I don't know if you guys prefer to do the right tailed one or the left tail. I don't really care. Inverse T, right? Now, when I go to inverse T, though, second bars, it asks me for DF, and I'm like, okay, well, DF, degrees of freedom. This is what she's talking about. You need degrees of freedom because student T distribution curve will vary dependent on sample size. So, degrees of freedom, N minus 1. So, we had 32 for our sample size. And that's what she was talking about. We need that, though, to find my critical value. You guys tell me, should I do the 1 minus here? Or should I do just 0 0.025? Should I do 1 minus 0 0.025? Or should I just do 0 0.025? Minus. 1 minus. And the reason. And I, I'm going to actually, I'll do both because technically it doesn't matter if you just remember to make it positive. Degrees of freedom with 31. And then I'll do it with, and again, just 
.025 preference, you know, whatever floats your boat, because you get the same number, one positive, one negative. So your critical T-score is approximately 2.04, if I'm rounding. Okay. And that's practice for later stuff. Okay. Also, if you were using the formula. <laughs> so, are you starting to see the repetition that I'm talking about? Yes. Repetitive. Um, you know, obviously, we've done a lot of examples where we don't know the population standard deviation, but what would change? Just Z interval instead of T interval, and then, you know, inverse norm instead of inverse T. That's all that would change. And then, you know, next week when we do proportions, we use something different. So let me stop recording. And let me let you.